Now the first step is to pick our alignment holes. We're going to use these inner ones here, and there'll be four of them. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to measure the distance between the centers of the holes, and it looks like nine inches. So we're going to take the center of our disc and we're going to cut two holes four and a half inches to the north, the south, the east, and the west. So let's go over to the drill press and do that. Okay, I just attached the bottom plate to the stand and did a quasi level on it. It's not really all that important right now, but I went ahead and I cut them with the drill press. And I've got one more bolt to put on that. Now I'm gonna put the second deck on and I'm gonna to have to use the hand drill to cut the center hole as the drill deck is simply not large enough to accommodate it. Now here it is put together just finger tight. And as you can see, it's literally rock solid. I've got the equatorial wedge on it right now. That's not the scope that's going to go on this one. Let's go ahead and have a look at that. So, the problem that you're going to run into with this is that if you mount the refractor telescopes right on it, because of the size of this plate, they won't be able to elevate in declination up to the zenith. So what I've got to do is I've got to get a rectangular or a square piece of steel that's going to come up about 18 inches. So about twice that far. That's Gracie, by the way. And on top of that, we'll put this plate right here. Okay, just an update on the construction of the telescope here. As you see, we have the two leveling plates in, and they are really working well even on the uneven garage floor and with hand tightened bolts and old washers, we're still getting a very good level. Now, to give the telescope clearance, I ordered this four by four square tubing. This is an eighth inch plate steel and I've placed the telescope mount for the big telescope on top of it, just to kind of give an example. And as you can see, Rock solid and level, even though it's not screwed in. Now we'll attach this plate to the tubing with these little brackets, and then I'll grind off this excess to make it smooth so that there's nothing the cable will catch on. And then the last step will be to drill some holes in the base out at the end so that we get the half inch lag screws in to attach it to the stump. Then we take it all apart, clean it up, paint it, and call it a day. These plates right here, while this one here is drilled for the big telescope, the other two mounts, one's got about an inch and a half hole in the center and the other has a two inch hole. There'll also be a pin drilled here to give the traversing mechanism something to push against. Now, once we have everything assembled, I'm gonna see how well the telescope turns on this plate. We may be able to put some graphite powder on it, or the other alternative is I have a couple of old CDs that I can use as rotational bearings. Now, the final thing that we have to do is we have to get a, um, a length of threaded rod. And I'm gonna run that down through this. That will screw into the base of the telescope to attach it to the plate here. It will then go all the way down through this tubing and come underneath. There'll be a wing nut underneath it to lock the telescope onto the pier. And then that will continue down and I'll drill a hole here in the center and it'll continue down into the base. I'll put a second wing nut there and then I'll just basically finger tighten that one so that it's in contact. That way I get a pillar right in the center of the two plates here. I can pivot on it and it will also support some of the weight of the telescope to prevent any flexing. I don't seem to have any problem with that, with this eighth inch plate, but why not put a little pillar here to give it a little extra support and transmit that weight of the telescope more down towards the base of the mount. 